Hi and welcome. The F4E is one of the most exported Phantom versions in the world. Dubbed the Kernus or Sledgehammer by the Israeli, it was widely used by the Iranian IIAF, later rebranded into the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force. The Phantom E has fought through many wars and eras, from Vietnam to the Yom Kippur War in the 70s, to the Iraqi Iranian War of the 80s. Although often tasked to perform air to ground or anti shipping missions, it proved itself capable in the skies as well. In Israeli hands, during the Yom Kippur War, the F-4E claimed a kill-to-death ratio of either 17 to 1 or 21 to 1, depending on how friendly fire accidents are counted. The lead air-to-air -air fighter for the Israeli, the Mirage 5, claimed a KDR of 19 to 1. The Iranians struggled more due to the geopolitical situation and the consequences of the revolution of 1979. Out of the circa 180 F-4E they possessed before the war, only a quarter may still be operational today, considering all the variants. In the USAF, the F-4E primarily operated in Vietnam and destroyed more than 20 hostile aircraft. As discussed in the previous video about the peculiarities of the F-4E, the Phantom II shows the full effect of the new missile-centric doctrine. The loss of the gun, in fact, was balanced, in theory, by the possibility of carrying up to eight air-to-air -air missiles, more than many predecessors. The Phantom carries up to four AIM-7 Sparrow in dedicated recesses in the fuselage called, Wells, along up to four AIM-9 Sidewinder mounted under the wings, on Lao-7 air-to-air missile launchers. The Sidewinder stations can also be used to carry various air-to-ground ordnance, whereas Station No. 3, on the front left of the Phantom, can be used to mount a pod, for example, the Westinghouse ANAVQ-23 PAVE spike. Bigger pods, such as the Ford Aerospace ANAVQ-26 PAVE TAC had to be mounted in the centerline station. The controls necessary to operate air-to-air -air weapons are varied, and are present in both cockpits. As usual, different upgrades of the F-4E may show different instruments and controls than what heat blur is implementing. In the front seat we find, top to bottom, the shoot lights, the head-up display lights, various controls on the multiple weapons control panel, plus more on stick and throttle. Most of these are fairly intuitive, so let's focus on the more obscure. In the multiple weapons control panel, we find the radar missile power switch. To guide Sparrow missiles, the switch should be set to CW, acronym for Continuous Wave. This operation energizes the CW transmitter and starts missile tuning. An RDR confirmation light turns on in the missile status lights assembly. Then, the switch can be returned to standby if needed, and the tuning and warm-up power is maintained. With the radar mode knob, not on TV, and the switch in the CW on position, the tuning is continually monitored. When the switch is originally moved from the off position, there is a 30 second delay before the missile power switch is energized. The missile status lights assembly displays a series of four RDR lights and four heat lights. The RDR light, mentioned before, is activated when the relative AIM-7 is correctly tuned, otherwise, the missile is dropped from the launch circuit automatically. The heat lights refer to the AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The interlock switch strictly affects the operation of the AIM-7 Sparrow. When the switch is set to the in position, a series of requirements are necessary for it to be employed, otherwise, it can be fired at any time. The in-range light must be on. The AIM dot is inside the ASE circle. And the radar display knob is not in the VI mode. The centerline tanker board light prevents the Phantom from entering in barbecue mode. Unfortunately, the AI does not convey the sarcasm well enough. Ha, ha, ha. Anyhow, the various configurations inform the pilot whether the AIM-7 mounted in the front wells can be operated or jettisoned, depending on the presence of a bomb or fuel tank in the centerline station. The tuning of the AIM-7 sparrows is not affected. The shoot, in range lights are used to inform the crew about the feasibility of missile employment. Interestingly enough, the shoot lights are inhibited when radar is selected, the aspect angle is 90 degrees plus or minus 9 degrees, and the elevation angle is lower than 5 degrees above the horizon. This feature prevents the employment of the AIM-7 in the main radar beam clutter. Moving forward to stick and throttle, the gun, missile switch, or pinky switch, 
is located on the left end of the throttle. It is a four-position control that allows the pilot to select the weapon selected between guns, radar, or heat missiles. In the case of heat missiles, it also allows selecting the station used. Forward selects radar missiles, center the heat missiles, rear is four guns, and up performs the heat reject function. This last position is spring-loaded. In certain versions of the F4E, the pinky switch also controls the radar scan corridor for the CAA mode, acronym for Computer Automatic Acquisition Mode. The details of this mode will be discussed in the future. In particular, the rear position, used for guns, centers the slewable scan at about 15 degrees azimuth. In the center position, used for heat, the scan is centered at about 0 degrees azimuth. Lastly, the forward position, centers the scan area at about 15 degrees right azimuth. The cage button performs a number of functions, but its basic purpose is to rapidly switch the weapon avionics from air-to-ground delivery status, to air-to-air -air status. Besides the double detent trigger, the control stick hosts two additional functions. The nose wheel steering, sometimes called nose gear steering, enables the radar auto acquisition mode. The AAR, acronym for air refueling release button, uncaged the seeker for the AIM-9 or the AIM-65 missiles. The control stick is present in the rear seat as well. Although it supports similar functions, the WIZO stick does not fire any armament or operate cameras. The radar is involved in air-to-air -air operations, as a means to find, track and engage targets with radar-guided missiles. However, this topic is vast and deserves a dedicated discussion. As a sort of entree, these are the controls involved for the basic target acquisition. The radar set control panel is located in the back seat. It somewhat resembles the sensor's control panel of the Tomcat, and similarly, it contains several radar-related controls. To acquire and track a target, the radar must be turned on. This is done by setting the radar power knob to the OPR position. The radar scan volume can be bore sighted, but for general operations, the standard usage mode is often preferable. To select it, the mode knob should be set to the RDR position. Next, assuming parameters such as range are met, the WIZO can use the side stick, called the antenna hand control, to bracket the target with the acquisition symbol, using the full action of the two stages trigger. He proceeds to press and hold until, when the range strobe precisely matches the target, the lock and happens automatically. At this point, the WIZO can release the action switch of the antenna hand control. Before wrapping up this introduction to the basic air-to-air -air controls and avionics, let's review the following checklist. Useful to have an idea of how guns, radar, and heat missiles are operated. As usual, keep in mind that there may be minor differences depending on which version of the F4E we are flying. These are the steps necessary to employ the AIM-7 Sparrow and have the trigger in the ready status. Radar power knob in the OPR position. The radar missile power switch must be in CW on. The missile or missiles must be tuned. Verify the RDR missile status lights. The interlock switch must be set to out. If set to in, the launch criteria discussed before must be satisfied. The gunner missile switch must be in radar position. The head-up status light should have the radar light on. The master arm must be in the arm position. Finally, as discussed before, there can be conditions that prevent the usage of the two AIM-7 sparrows mounted in the front wells. The procedure to employ the AIM-9 Sidewinder is much simpler, as the radar is not a requisite. The gunner missile switch must be in the heat position. Verify that the missile status heat light is on, and the head-up heat light is also on. The master arm must be in the arm position. Finally, these steps set the trigger to the ready status when guns are employed. The gunner missile switch must be in the gun position. Verify that the head-up gun light is on. The gun station button must be on. Check that the gun green light is on. The master arm must be in the arm position. Verify that the gun station arm light and the head-up arm light are both on. And that's all for this video about air-to-air -air weapons employment. Going forward, we will have a look at some peculiarities of the radar and other aspects of the Phantom E. Thanks for watching, and take care.